Next one we discussed about the date dimension. Okay, how do we, so we need to create a dedicated table. So why do we need to create a dedicated table? If you want to do a filtering, if you want to, to uh, do some time-based analysis, you have to have the dedicated uh, date dimension table. That is, this is very specific. This is not specific to Power BI. You take any reporting tool, uh, any data warehouse project, the, you know, the, there will be a dedicated table for date. Okay, date uh, dimension will be there. So with date dimension, you can do filtering mm, well, okay. So you must have at least one date table in your model. This is what we discussed. And uh, what are the, you know, the guidelines to create a table? So the date, date table, um, you, you know, the it should have a date column. It should be a date data type. And then second one is the column should contain unique values. There should not be any duplicate in the date column. And then you are not supposed to have any blank values. You're not supposed to have any, you're not supposed to store the dates by skipping some dates. Okay. And it should be sequential. You should store the date uh, in sequential. Okay. In, in between, there should not be any gap. Uh, in case of any holidays, uh, any, right, let's say if you, even if you don't do any business on a specific days, still the date table should capture all the dates right from the day you started your business to till date, latest date, whatever the dates are there, you need to store it in sequential. So missing dates, that is what it says. You are not, it's not about blank. Okay, there's a difference between these two. Blank is in a null. Uh, here, it's a missing days, nothing. You're not supposed to skip the days because I don't do business on Saturday, Sunday. I'm going to exclude those two dates. No, still you need to include those two dates. That is what it says. It should span full years. The year is not necessarily a calendar year. It can be your fiscal year also. So the, the, in your, the calendar year is Jan to December, December. But in US, the fiscal year is also same, Jan to December. Okay. But in India, it is um, March to April or April to March. Uh, right? So current year, April to next year, March 31st. And then what you do is you need to specify this. Isn't it? you need to explicitly specify it as a date table. There is a property, you can go and set it as a date table. Once you create your custom date uh, dimension table, you need to set it as date uh, table. Okay. Automatic date table also we discussed. The automatic date tables are created automatically based on the number of date columns that are available in your data set or model. For example, in your table, you have three date columns are available. For each date column, it creates the separate uh, date table automatically. The disadvantage is you cannot view the date table. And also you want to you if you want to use any of the, uh, you know, the date columns. Create, right. So in your DAX expression, you cannot use it. And uh, other thing is like um, if you wanted to customize it, if you want to add month prefix or day prefix, that is not possible. Hence, it is always the best practice to create the dedicated date dimension table. So what are the way that I can create the date table? You can use auto date time. This is not recommended. This one, but still, you know, this is one of the approaches. The second one is you can use a power query to generate a date table. But you can use DAX. DAX is pretty simple compared to any other thing. Right? Using DAX, you can create a, you can generate a date table. You have something called calendar function. Apart from this, you have something called calendar auto function is also available. With these two functions, you can create the date table. Okay, with these two functions, you can create the date table. And uh, apart from this, um, you can take a clone. You can take, for example, you already have a date uh, dimension is available. If you want to clone it, you can you clone it using <clears throat> the date, um, sorry, the all function. There is something called all function. Okay, and that is what you can do it. And ne now the next thing is uh, the other option. This is what I discussed it. Okay, next one, the, the, the calendar function. So how do I create a date called table using calendar function you can use uh, the minimum maximum as an argument or you can hard code the value it is not the best practice uh, hard coding the values 
Okay, and uh, that is not the preferred one. So what I will do is I will go to the Power BI desktop. I'll show you once again how to create the table. And uh, this is the one I shared with you all. Okay, if you have not shared, please remind me. I will share it later, okay? So here I just uh, go and create the date uh, dimension table. Click on the date uh, data view. And here you can, uh, let me select the ECS fact table. Here you have the date column here, right? So it is a text to my dot. So this is one painful thing. I'll just go and change it. It will not take much time. Change it to the date data type. So it is not good always, right? If you directly convert it to date here, better you can use uh, using locale also. And here the date data type and the English United States. Yes, now we don't see any error. It got uh, converted successfully as a D data type. All right, so next thing is I just uh, close this and apply. Actually, this one does not have much data here. Um, let me just... Uh, Import another file also. The same thing, I'm using the same data set here. I just remove the top rows, the first one. How do you remove the top rows? Click on remove rows and fly, put one here. The first row will get removed. And then the order date, what I do is I just uh, replace the values of hyphen by forward slash. And then I just uh, click over here and uh, locale. I'll just change the date. We are all set. I'm going to apply this one, close and apply the steps, whatever I carried out in the Power Query editor, okay? Okay, you can ignore this error. So there are some issues out there here. We can ignore it, like I said earlier. Sales fact and dim date got um, linked here. Sorry, location table and sales fact got linked. And next one is your sales W04. And uh, the other one is 
where is the dim yeah dim date where it to create it okay 6w04 is available fine i just go to the data view and i'm going to create a date dimension table click on the table tools currently i'm in the data view click on the table tools now you need to select the new table option here here i just say dim date dim underscore date date dimension this is the naming convention most of them they use it and here i just use calendar function here start date end date you can specify the date here manually for example 1 1 2019 comma uh, 31 1 2019 you can specify but that is not the best practice what you need to do is you need to use the minimum of some column so that it will be automated so this time i am going to pick up the order date from my sales underscore w04 because it has a lot of data in it and then here the same thing sales underscore w04 order date i'm going to use it what this calendar function does is it returns a table okay starting with the start date as the minimum what are the minimum value that is the start date 1 1 2011 maximum date is your the recent date this is earliest date and recent date it create it, this calendar function returned a date table fine so date column sorry uh, date column and also it returns a table what i do is for my convenience i just convert the date data type here itself we can convert the data type okay i don't need the time part here okay fine what is the next step i'm going to hit the new column from this i will be extracting the year alone year is equivalent to year of these are all dax function sales w04 of uh, order date sorry not sales in a sort dim date right so we need to pick up this date so we need to extract the year from this date. This date column belongs to which table? Dim date table. Look at this table. Okay. Look here. It extracted years alone from this column, date column. So similarly, I extract a month from this date column. So there is a format function using format you can extract the month in terms of text i just want to extract the month in terms of text here what i do is i just give something meaningful this column is already there month prefix i just say month prefix but display the month in text but display it in three letters that is enough okay jan fab so if you specify one more m 4m it will return the full month name but we don't need the full month name so similarly you can extract the the day also from here so new column so you have a quarter function is available you can try the quarter also and here Sorry. This one will give you the day um, in, in, in text, day name in text, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And apart from this, uh, I just want to create another column called quarter. This is how we can create it.
Instead of format, I'm going to use something called quarter. And here I don't need all the things. Simply you can specify the quarter name. So this day falls given any specific. Okay, this is your quarter. So, okay, good. So we are able to extract, uh, similarly, you have something called uh, the day function is available using which extract the day. For example, one, two, three, four, so the day alone from the date column, month alone, you can extract it. Uh, in, in month, in terms of number, month in terms of text, you can extract it. And then year alone, you can extract it using year function. Now you understood how to create a simple date dimension table using calendar function. In the case of calendar function, look here, when I click on the dim date, this is the formula, this is the function that I use, calendar. The first argument, uh, you know, was the minimum of my order date and maximum of my order date. Now the question is, okay, I have order date, I have, uh, you know, I have created this calendar table based on the order date. Okay, it is computing the minimum date, the earliest date and latest date. But you remember we have something called ship date. We have another column called ship date. In the case of ship date, the simple um, simple phenomenon is so the we don't ship on the most see all the or not all the orders we ship it on the same uh, ordered date, right? So today you ordered, but the ship date need not to be same date. It will be later date. So ship date is greater than or equal to order date. So in that case, what will happen is this date dimension does not capture into the maximum of ship date. Okay, you remember, you know, you keep this in mind. So I have two call date columns are there, order date and ship date. Now the question is why not ship date? Why, you know, why order date? Because order is the one we receive it first and the shipment, we do it either on the same day which we received the order or we'll do it in the later date. But if you use the R, you, you cannot use, in this case, what happened? Minimum of order date, you will have to use it because this is the first order you receive. Without receiving order, we can do the shipment. Okay, this is the minimum uh, date. You can consider missing minimum date. But in this case, can I use uh, max of order date or can I use max of ship date? Right, so, th so that kind of confusion will come here. Okay. You just pass this in your thought at this moment. Okay, I will explain you how to deal with this. And so in that case, you might be asking this question. So in that case, do I need to create two date dimension table? One is for order, one is for shipment. No, not required. In that case, you will end up having so many tables unnecessarily. Okay. But as of now, you understood how to create a calendar table. We'll discuss in detail about, uh, you know, why we need to base the order date to create the calendar table. That we will discuss it little later. The calendar function, remember that it returns the table. It returns the table, uh, you know, and it returns the table and at the same time it returns a, it returns a date column. That table will have a date column. The date column will be a date data type, date time data type by default. So I just convert, converted it to date data type for this demo purpose. And then extracting the year, month, quarter from this uh, date column, which was written by columnar function uh, was pretty simple, right? That's what I've shown you here. So there is another function called calendar auto. We have another function called calendar auto. The calendar auto, what it does is, you don't have to specify the minimum maximum date. It goes and automatically checks in your model. It goes and checks in your model, which date is your uh, minimum date, which one should be considered as the earlier, earliest date, which one should be considered as the recent date. It automatically determines that. So for that, what we need to make sure that even the ship date column also should be your date at a time. So not here, this is an error record. Here I just go the sales W04 
and the shift date column i just uh, replace the values the same consistency issue English, uh, United States, we are done with it. So now it will get kind of a detail type. I'm going to apply close and I'm going to apply this step and close it. Let's wait for some time. Okay, so this is the error. Let's click on the errors and we'll close it. My date dimension is now ready. Okay, so date dimension is ready. And uh, well, this is one pain. Okay, so load completed. Okay, close. It takes a lot of time. Now you understood how to create a date uh, dimension table using calendar function. In the interview, they'll ask you, so how did you create your date dimension? Okay, or uh, date dimension, the last date time dimension. <clears throat> so you have used the calendar function. Other option is calendar auto. The calendar auto function is the Power BI's a date and time function in DAX. So it returns a table with, like calendar function returns a table with single column, which con which will have the contiguous, continuous set of dates, like uh, the calendar function's date column. Same as this one. But in the case of uh, calendar auto function, we don't have to use the min or max, okay? It automatically finds out the minimum value in your model and then maximum date value in your model. So in my model, if you see here, here the and we are talking about sales w 4 ignore the other tables. So the order date and then the, where is the ship date? Ship date. So these are the two date columns are available in this table. Okay, and uh, we have the sales fact table also. Let me do one thing. I will just um, remove this for the time being. It will cause confusion. Press Del key, select the table, press the Del key and then you remove it. In the case of calendar auto function, the beauty is the date range, the mean and maximum, that range, uh, you know, the it returns, uh, you know, automatically by the calendar auto. You don't have to explicitly specify min or maximum. The calendar auto ignores the calculated tables and calculated columns searching for date columns. In case you have calculated column or uh, calculated tables are there, the calendar auto will not work with this. Okay, the calendar auto function returns an error if the model does not contain any date time values which are not in calculated columns or calculated tables. You need to remember this thing. Anyhow, I will cover this once again as part of the DAX topic. That is the end of this course, okay, the Power BI course, okay. SQL Server, that is a different thing. Uh, when it comes to Power BI, the DAX is the last chapter. That time I will explain it in detail. At this moment, you understand uh, the difference between calendar and, and the calendar auto function. The calendar auto function automatically goes and finds out the range of dates 
from the model. We don't have to specify min or maximum. Okay. So in the, in the case of, uh, uh, for example, how it calculates. For example, in this case, we have the ship date and order date. Two dates are there. As I discussed in the date dimension table while creating it using calendar function, I have used the, I have based this table uh, by the order date column, min of order date, max of order date. But in this case, I have order date, ship date is there. What, how it works is, for example, let me just type, write some values here. For example, here you have the order date and then you have ship date. Let me just... You can resize this one just for visualization purpose for our visual. Okay. You have the order date table and uh, one second. Let me just go and select this one. And then you have ship date column. Order date and ship date column. For example, the minimum order date. So the minimum of the order date, let's assume that 1-1-2011. And then uh, maximum of order date. If you take the maximum on the order date, this is an interesting one, constant date here, 31-12-2014. Similarly, if you take the minimum on the ship date, let's assume that, um, okay, 8 1 2011 and then the maximum is something like uh, maximum ship date 4 January 2015 because uh, the ship date should be greater than your order date right so the maximum of order date uh, and uh, the maximum ship date will not be same the maximum ship date will be more than your maximum of your order date. With this itself, we can understand, right? The, the first order we received on 2011, Jan 1st. Okay. And uh, the this is the earliest date, first order we received it. And this is the recent order. Okay. And but if you see here, the recent shipment happened on 4 1 2015, but uh, the minimum shipment 8 1 2011. So what happens is the calendar auto function, it generates the date starting from this date, one, uh, 1st Jan 2011. Okay, this is the minimum date. Compared to these two, these two values, this is the minimum. Okay, now it compares these two values. Of these two, which one is minimum? This is the minimum. And then it compares these two, and which one is maximum? This is the maximum. Okay, in this case, what happened? Uh, the maximum date is going to be 2015. Minimum date is your 2011. Okay, start from 1st Jan 2011 to 1st Jan 2011 to uh, here, what happens is it will generate the table, uh, you know, the two, uh, till 2015, 31st December 2015. 31st December 2015, 2.015. In this case, it covers both the order date as well as the ship date. Isn't it? So 2011 here and max of this one. But here what happens is, though it is on 2015, uh, 4th uh, Jan 2015, it spans the full years. It, it generates the values, the date values starting from 1st Jan 2011 to 31 December 2015 in the name of a date column. If you see the date column produced with the current route of function for this values, okay, for these values, you will find 1st Jan 2011 to 31st December 2015. Uh, you know, you will find all the dates in between this will be stored here. Got it. This is the idea of calendar auto. So which one is better? The calendar auto is better, right? So um, 
And the other advantage of calendar auto is you can specify the fiscal year also. The calendar auto, uh, the argument you can specify three. In our case, India, it is three. You can specify three. What will happen is it will generate the values from, uh, the, sorry, it will have the values uh, the, the April 1st to next year, March 31st, it will have, it will store the value. Okay, it will store the value that way. Any of let us not get confused with that one. We will see it later point in time. Now what I will do is I will show you how you can uh, create uh, the calendar, how you can create the date, um, so the date dimension using the calendar auto function. And uh, instead of clicking one after other here, in this case, in the case of calendar function, what we did, I just use a calendar function. This calendar function created a table called dim date in this table the calendar table return only date column. The date column is a date data. Fine. With this, we, we manually we extracted each and everything, right? So now what I will do is I'm going to create another date uh, diamond, so date dimension using calendar auto. I just uh, select the table tools and then here I just click on the new table. I just say dim date and this is uh, C auto, okay, just for our reference, okay, here I just say, here I'm going to use a function called add columns. Add columns function also returns a table, but the advantage of add columns is you don't have to click on, uh, you know, the new column to create every now and then to create year, month, all the things. We can put all the commands in a single function add columns and you just watch how I do calendar auto it is a function and then comma press enter hold the shift key sorry hold the all hold the alt key in your keyboard and then press enter it will come to the next line and then what you do is you just press tab or so you can move the cursor and then here what we will do is we will start with um, uh year function okay i just start with year you just this is a column name here is the column name comma format you can use format also here what i do is i just say this one is going to return a date column which one the calendar auto function so here i just put a comma and then you know y y y and here the y y y you need to put it in double quote And then the next one is comma. I need month also. And format date. Day, sorry, the date column. Okay, date column. And then, sorry, date. Comma, mm. This is for format function and here it gives some error here. So here, uh, here the calendar auto comma and then here comma format date. Okay, date uh, inside this comma YY and then yeah, you need to close this format, right? I did not close it here because format is a function. You need to close this one. Now the error went off. So you can specify month here. And then uh, you can use quarter also, comma, quarter.
This is my quarter and uh, just format it. Format it. There is a problem here. Okay, comma. Okay, and then the format. Or you can use the quarter. Quarter function and you can simply specify quarter here. Okay, I did not specify comma. That's the reason why it was. Just press enter. Look here. Only one formula bar itself we are able to create multiple columns using add columns the add columns returns a table even the calendar auto returns a table but the advantage here is uh, with add columns in this the table returned by the um, calendar auto right so in addition to that on the fly you can create year month quarter everything here in one go if you see the dim date what we did to create extract the year we, we created we clicked on the new column year you created and again click on the new column use the quarter function and click on the queue right so instead you can use like this okay this one is pretty dynamic look here year month so it took uh, the this one the calendar auto function in this case what happened it considered the latest date from the date table, uh, sorry, the minimum date and maximum date and all, it, it took care of it automatically. And then month number, if you want month number, you can use the month of date, something you can keep using, uh, you know, like this. And the creating these, this kind of calendar table or date table using the add column is pretty faster, isn't it? Because it uh, involves uh, just noting down the columns to be used and then generating them using their expressions, format, something like that. It's pretty simple. You don't have to keep click, uh, add columns, all add columns for everything. Just press enter, we are done with this. Now you understood the difference between calendar auto and calendar function. And also you understood add columns. So you learned three DAX functions also. Now it's uh, the calendar function is one DAX function. In that, you need to specify minimum date and maximum date. And are the advanced, the problem there is it has to compute the minimum and maximum value. And you need to specify, you know, you'll get confused whether it's an order date or ship date. If you have multiple date columns, it's a problem. So you leave it with calendar auto. Calendar auto it goes to each and every date table. Like I said, uh, the minimum of order date and maximum of ship date. It automatically finds out the range of dates between these two uh, you know ranges and then it stores the date uh, values in the date column continuously okay uh, here you don't have a specific look here i just simply specific calendar auto that's all okay and if you want to use the uh, the the fiscal uh, year as right in our case the third month it starts the fiscal year okay so in this case automatically it creates the fiscal date also Look, it will take some time. Okay, look here, quarter three started, right? Quarter three started. And if you see here, and uh, yeah, four, two, one, everything is there. So quarter three and quarter four, quarter three. But if I don't use three here, so when you use three, what happens? Hey, consider March month is our, March month end is our calendar date. So here I just removed it, but still it shows the previous one. Let's to ignore this one. So this is another way of creating the date dimension. And if you see here, all the values are unique. So second, second July was not repeating it. Second July 2012 should not repeat. Okay. Each and every date should appear only one time in this date column. You don't have to do it. The calendar auto function makes it makes use that it returns the values uh, continuously, starting from the minimum to maximum date. Yeah, starting from 2011, five years data are, are available in this data set, but it considers the 2012 is the minimum date. Probably we can check the minimum of this one also in another column. You can check that one also, okay. So now you understood there are two approaches. One is the calendar function and calendar auto. 
another thing is you can use all function but um, you don't have to use all function that is that you can use it to copy the data from one dimension date table to another date dimension table first of all you should have one date dimension isn't it better you can go for calendar auto it automatically finds the range of dates Okay, what else? Okay, I just uh, save this. Once I share it to your WhatsApp number, what you do, right? You just download it to your laptop. And then what you do is, you just click, you know, go to the data view and click on the dim date. And here you will find the function which I used it here. And then click on the dim date C auto, calendar auto. You can see what you know, the function that I use it here, how I use it here. This is how you can refer the DAX functions that I used it here. Okay, next one is uh, the role playing dimension we already discussed. We discussed about the star and snowflake schema. Fine, all right. So hope you understood uh, how, what is how to create uh, the date dimension using calendar and calendar auto function and auto automatically created uh, date dimension date tables are not helpful and it, it uh, creates redundant tables and also it is not much helpful you cannot add a custom column you cannot use the columns uh, that uh, that are available as part of the automatic date table in your DAX expression.